Welcome to today's live. Today we're talking about why and how your words, thoughts, mood, emotions, and body play a significant role in what is happening in the world. I'm Peggy O'Neill. I'm the founder of Answering the Call. It's my commitment that people be able to live the lives that they're here to truly live, to know who they truly are, so that their how they live their lives and who they truly are are aligned and they get to express themselves fully in the world in the way that they're really meant to express themselves. And you, you, <laughs> not just themselves, but you. And uh, so that's what we're about here. And I appreciate you being here. If you're here live, please put your, I mean, please say hi. If you're watching this on replay, please put hashtag replay in. I love knowing that you were here. If you have any questions or comments today or at any time, Please post them and I will answer them. So why and how your words, thoughts, mood, emotions, and body play a significant role in what's happening in the world? And these specific questions are going to get answered. What is the interplay and corresponding significance of my words, thoughts, mood, emotions, and body? How much of a difference can I really make? And aren't you, Peggy, aren't I exaggerating? your ability to affect change. And I added another one. Why do these all play a significant role in what's happening in the world? Okay, so what is the interplay and corresponding significance of th our thoughts, words, mood, emotions, and body? Well, one way to think about it is this, that this circle represents, let's see, let me get this where I can see. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that circle is going to represent our words and our thoughts. Or another way to say that is our language. Okay, and then let's create another circle here with our body. And our body means um, how we move our body, how we hold our body, um, how we, like, do we move our, uh, do we have, uh, you know, do we move quickly? Do we move slowly? Do we uh, stand straight? Do we slunch out, scunch over, <laughs> slump over? <laughs> you know, so and so that's what I mean by body. How we breathe as well, all of that, anything related to our body. And then the other element is our um, our uh, mood and our feelings. Our mood and our feelings. So our mood is the underlying emotional state that we carry with us all the time. It can be a mood of joy, optimism, can be a mood of sadness, um, loneliness. So that's what I mean by mood. So these three interplay, think about it. We can't separate our words and our thoughts and our language from our body. We, we say it, and as we say it, then that affects our body. As we think it, it affects our body. So, so for example, if you think I, um, you know, I'm really unhappy today, then think about it. That's going to affect how your body feels. If you think I'm really excited about today, that's going to affect how your body feels. And then, um, because our emotions, because they create emotions, and then our emotions impact our body, how we feel. So if we feel really sad, really lonely, um, and we're thinking thoughts that are aligned with that, then our body isn't going to want to move very much, is it? It's going to want to stay still. Flip side, let's say we've got a couch potato body. We're really used to sitting still and being uh, not moving much and getting heavier as we sit on the couch and watch TV. Different things are happening, but our body then doesn't feel like it wants to go anywhere because it's not used to going anywhere. So if you want to, uh, you know, um, you know, get active or, you know, like say double your income or something, then you don't want to have a couch potato body anymore. You've got to have a body aligned with what it is that you truly want in the world. Hey, Sharon, I'm so glad that you are here. So these three are inter 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 interacting with each other all the time. And that's, so you can think of that overlap of that as uh, how, how we express in the world and how, how those things are impacting how we're being, and who we're being in the world. Let's see, did I cover all of them? I think so. So, um, so that's how the interplay works, is each of those impacts the other. And so we want to be aware of that. Um, 
uh, and so really being aware of uh, of each of each of those. Now, what does that mean in relationship to what we're learning about here? That who we truly are, that we're being lived. Well, part of it is being aware of what I'm saying right now. It's not that I'm talking about changing anything. But by having now this knowledge, this information, then the next time, let's say, you're feeling sad, you might, uh, or lonely, then this, you might, this might come to you. Go, oh, I'm feeling this way. Then you might do the emotional work that we've talked about at another time. Or you might uh, just si si quickly say to yourself, relax the focus of attention because you want to shift your attention away from that so you can experience who you truly are. Or with your body, if one day you might go, oh man, I'm sitting too much. No wonder I don't feel like doing anything. I'm gonna get up and move this body. So that's why I'm telling you this and how it relates to the non-dual teachings and what we know about who we truly are is that by having this information, it makes you more aware and more able then to, to, to notice that um, notice uh, have I you know, ideas can come to you like oh I'm going to move my body or oh I want to change how I'm talking not not I'm, I'm not trying to change myself I'm just noticing that I'm talking in ways that are keeping me sad hmm I think I'll change my language so it's not changing myself I hope this is clear it's not like I'm trying to get somewhere to change myself it is I just notice oh that's not quite an alignment so I'm not gonna say that I'm gonna say something different now so and why do those play a significant role in what's happening in the world where well we're one being we're one being one being so if I'm talking about I wrote an article this week, if you saw it, that there's a lot of language out there these days about fighting for something. Even when they're talking about uh, having fewer guns, then the next word out of their mouth is we've got to go to battle for this. We've got to fight for this. Well, what are what's most fighting and battle done with now? Guns. I mean, it's 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 a form of insanity as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and, you know, in one second, actually, they're talking about gun control. In the next second, they're using language that brings to mind battle, killing, images of fighting. So our language is that impactful. So, um, and, and so when people hear it, it when, well, when we think it, it creates images, feelings in our minds. Uh, when we say it to other people, same thing. And so since we're one being, as our mood changes, as our speaking changes, as our body changes, it impacts everything. It impacts everything. Think about it. If you had a glass of water that was filled to the brim and then you dropped a couple of marbles in it, it would overflow, right? So it's, it's like that. Everything we do impacts Everything interplays, everything um, uh, influences everything else. Our language is, a, is, a, is vibration. Talk to yourself after we finish this session today. Say some things to yourself and notice that you can feel a different vibration with different words. If you say, um, you know, I'm really happy today. You can feel the vibe, like right then I could even, because I'm paying attention, I notice the vibration in my throat saying those words. Notice the mood that that creates as I say that, the feelings in my body. If I say, gosh, I really dread everything I have to do today. That's a totally different vibration. I could feel it differently in my throat, feel a different feeling coming through to me. My body feels different. So that's just with us personally, but that's, it impacts other people. So the next time you're around other people, notice what they say. How so a lot of us have kind of tuned out, toned out. You know, uh, we we don't realize how sensitive we are because we've we we believe that we're separate. We believe that we're finite. We believe we end at the edges of our body, and 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 then we 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 become desensitized over the years with years of conditioning to not notice how we're influenced and impacted by other things. So as you notice this, pay more attention to it. Next time you're talking with somebody, or even right now, you might notice, what do you experience as you're hearing me? What, 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 how is this influencing 
you so that it can start sinking in. Oh, yeah. Every conversation, every interaction. I pass someone on the street. That's influencing me. So that is why everything we say, do, every movement is impacting everything. Right now, my hand's moving around, impacting the flow of the air in this room. And then it goes out into the rest of the world. Yes. So you might still say, well, but, but I'm just an insignificant one person in all the universe. No, you're not. No, you're not. You are the universe. You are the universe. You're not an insignificant speck in the universe. You are the universe. Just like a wave is the ocean. Just like you're seeing me on the screen right now. Like, it's just like, um, I'm not separate from the screen that you're looking at. I am the screen, or not me, but I mean the image of me is, is the screen. Or if you're watching a movie, the whole, the, the movie, the picture on the screen is the screen. You are the universe. So this isn't now about feeling guilty or bad or, oh no, I'm saying something wrong and so therefore I'm uh, impacting. No, 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 it's none of that. Because remember, we're not a separate self. So we're, we're and those are thoughts. So whatever we're doing, we're, consciousness expressing through us is actually allowed it. So this isn't now about feeling guilty, worrying about what you're saying, anything. That implies a separate self. So it's not that. But by being this awareness, then several things. One is, you know, one of the reasons we're here is so that you can live your life all out and be what you're here to be expressing the universe. So everything you do impacts everyone and everything else. No matter what it is. And, and again, you've never done anything wrong. So, so even if it's something you might think is not good, it's still what's meant to happen. And again, the more we become aware of this, then the more we naturally shift our words, our actions, our moods, our bodies, the way we talk to other people, because we, we there's no longer this sense of separation and defensiveness and protectiveness that occurs. So you naturally align things more with who you truly are, your activities, your roles, your language, your body, everything. So, so you play a very significant role in the world, in the universe. You are the universe. So am I exaggerating your ability to affect change? No. Not at all. And again, not trying to change anything, but we can get kind of hopeless about the world sometimes, maybe. You know, kind of go, oh, look what's going on, and I wish people would get along better, and I wish that, that, but what can I do? Do this, simply. Live in the world the way you want to live aligned with the peace and the love and the beauty and the fulfillment and the meaning that you are. And that is a ripple effect throughout the universe. Every word that comes out of your mouth, every movement of your body, every emotion, every expression of your body. You're creating the experience, your experience, sorry, not you, but what's being experienced through you is that beautiful expression. And it's, and it's the universe. And you're, you're uh, influencing everything that's happening in every moment. So I am not at all exaggerating your ability to affect how you would like to see the world to be. Not by judging it, not by trying to change it, but by knowing and living is who you truly are. So I'll see, do we have any questions or comments here? Or any thoughts you want to add to this? Or any experience you've had related to what I'm talking about today that you'd like to share? So as I'm waiting to see if there are any comments here, and I'm reminded of the butterfly effect. Yes, yep. it's, a, it's a true... Um, 
true occurrence. The butterfly's wings in one part of the world starts impacting the, the air and it, it can eventually turn into a tornado. Now, I don't know actually if scientifically that's been proven. You might know, Sharon, but it's talked about all the time. So when it's talked about all the time, we can take usually uh, that there's some truth to it. It wouldn't keep showing up if there wasn't some truth to it. So as I'm look, waiting to see if there are any other comments or thoughts or questions, I'll let you know that I'm leading a free workshop on everything we're talking about here. It's uh, the exact title, oh, escapes me, but it's something like, who am I and how do I want to live? It's a free workshop here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. So if you're anywhere near the area or you're going to be in the area, uh, please uh, DM me or email me at Peggy at peggy-oneal.com and let me know you want to join us. We would love for you to join us. May 17th, I don't know if I said that, May 17th. And I'll hold another free online workshop in June, June the 13th. So I'll let you know more about that later. Sharon, the flutter of a butterfly wing is subtle, but that can grow into the winds that create hurricanes. So it is with each of us. Yep, exactly, Sharon, exactly. Thank you for adding that to this conversation. All right, and thank you for being here, and I look forward to being with you again next week. Have a great week knowing who you truly are, living as the, the one being that you are intimately connected, intimately entangled with everything and everyone, expressing the beautiful you that you are. Oh, thank you, Sharon. Yeah, Sharon's going to be with us on the 17th. So um, would love for you to join me and Sharon and we've got a handful of other people so far. And this is going to be a really great day. So thank you, Sharon, for encouraging people to join us. Alrighty. Thank you, everybody. Bye.